Hi, welcome to Genesis Engineers Academy. In this video, I am going to discuss on journal bearings, also called as sliding contact bearings. Okay. So this is a cross-sectional view of a journal bearing. So in which the hole is created, in into which that is bush is inserted and uh, this journal called it's nothing but a shaft so you can also draw that is journal bearing as that of this one so this is uh, side view of this this is the shaft that we know and this is shaft rotating so this uh, in this there is called a bush so this is and this is the shaft also called as journal so what is meant by journal the part uh, this is called as bearing so the bearing bears the shaft and for smooth or for uh, for reducing the uh, friction we will uh, select the different types of metals like bronze all these things right so this is the bush and this is the bearing and this is the clearance and also sometimes we may use this clearance for a lubrication and if you observe radial clearance radial clearance means radius of the bearing minus radius of the journal diameter clearance means diameter of the bearing diameter of the journal that is the double the uh, clearance radial clearance so while uh, solving the problem you have to keep in mind whether it is radial clearance or diametral clearance i hope you understood so this is uh, housing so we are going to study what is the original friction of the this journal bearing and also you will find out uh, the other things uh, how much uh, lubricant is uh, needed for uh, dissipating the heat generated because there is a metal to metal contact or otherwise surface contact okay let us go into the details what is uh, journal or otherwise uh, sleeve bearing so the radial bearings why it is called radial bearing the load is radial so the radial bearings are also called as journal and sleeve bearings it works on hydrodynamic lubrication and supports the load in radial direction so main next one is uh, the portion of the shaft inside the bearing is called journal and this portion needs better finish and also some specific properties depending upon the extent to which the bearing envelops the journal these bearings are classified as full partial and fitted in full journal bearing the angle of contact of the bushing with the journal is 360 a partial uh, journal bearing angle of contact of bushing with the journal is 120 so these are used in railroad cars so it okay so this is uh, there is another called a clearance bearing is a bearing in which uh, the radius of the journal is uh, less than the radius of the bearing that means there is a vast clearance between bearing and uh, journal so in this uh, journal bearing we have the some base also called as which accommodates this journal we call that as a bearing the one which rotates in a bearing we call it as a journal and it it is nothing but a shaft and based on there is another thing called foot step bearing is a thrust bearing foot step bearing means so this is the uh, bearing uh, this is the journal right and uh, so this is the 
housing you understand so this is the bearing and this is the journal and it rotates around so here the end will have the contact so this, there is the possibility of friction here so this becomes thrust it 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 provides in in this uh, this is a foot step bearing there is another called collar bearing what is meant by collar so we'll provide collar here then it is a collar bearing in some cases we provide the collars in between that is in the housing itself okay so this uh, we call it as so this is our you got my point so this is collar bearing multi collar so this is a single collar so this also comes under general bearing only so the based on ld ratio l means length and d means diameter of the journal we also divide into several parts this is not important one but to be have uh, this one knowledge we will come to know. what is meant by short bearing so length and diameter is less than one what is that mean if you clearly observe length is shorter than the diameter if length is equal to diameter then it is one that is a square okay so short square and l by d that means greater than one means l is more okay than the diameter then it is called long bearing that's enough that's knowledge is enough so foot step bearing so there is another called fitted bearing that means it is a close clearance fit that is called it rotates but the gap between the bearing and this one is also must uh, that is somewhat smaller okay so the radius of the journal and radius of the bearing are equal that means it's a close clearance fit so this mackis equation it this is the equation in this uh, uh, mack equation is used to find the that is coefficient of friction of the journal so in this this is the constant 33.25 10 to the power of 8 here this is the viscosity of the lubricant we use to reduce the friction this is speed that is journal speed or rotational speed that is in rpm this is bearing pressure so in general that is that is the length of the shaft rotating in the journal okay so this is the bearing this is the journal so you can keep like that one okay the part of this one the outside is here okay so this is part is journal uh, journal it is called the diameter is d and this length is l okay that you have to take into account so this uh, l into d and the load w so the bearing pressure p is equal to load acted on the shaft by projected area okay this is l this is d so that is okay so where this is a diameter of the journal this is the uh, clearance or otherwise radial clearance plus k so mu is absolute viscosity of the lubricant and n is equal to journal speed that is in rpm and c is the radial clearance that has to be kept in mind so it is uh, must be different from diametral clearance next one is the diameter d is the diameter of the journal and the bearing pressure p is equal to load acted upon the shaft by projected area that is l into d and the k is the constant we have to add this cannot be reduced that so that is the minimum uh, friction avail in the this one so that is 0.002 next there is a uh, pro, uh, temperature rise how much temperature is generated so the heat generated in the bearing that is hg is equal to coefficient of friction just now we have 
calculated or uh, learned so this is coefficient of uh, friction of the journal and this is the load acting on that one so this is the peripheral velocity v is equal to pi d n by 60 okay so that is uh, peripheral velocity you can also call the surface velocity so this uh, this and this will give you force and this gives the velocity or otherwise so that is heat generated and where w is equal to p into l into d that is this is bearing pressure bearing pressure this is and this is length this is diameter of the journal heat carried away by the oil flow is mass into specific heat mass specific heat and temperature difference that is temperature of the oil at inlet minus temperature of the oil at outlet okay that that difference is there that is cp is the specific heat of the lubricating oil okay now heat dissipated by the bearing that is ca into tb minus ta tb is the bearing temperature and ta is the ambient temperature or otherwise outside air temperature so it has been shown by the experiment that the temperature of the bearing is approximately midway between the temperature of the oil film and the temperature of the outside air so that is why tb minus ta is equal to half of a uh, temperature of the oil minus temperature of the air so where c is dissipation coefficient and and a is the projected area just now we have discussed so sometimes you will be asked to find out the mass of the oil required to carry away heat m is equal to heat generated by cp into delta t so heat generated you can also sometimes heat carried away that is also called dissipated okay so this and this are equal if this data is given we use this one if this data is given we use this one okay whatever it is Please. next one is bearing characteristic curve so this uh, uh, will uh, uh, predict the where the uh, lubrication uh, uh, of the journal uh, is going to have next one it is a curve between bearing bearing characteristic number that is uh, bcn is mu n by p so the bearing characteristic curve is drawn uh, between coefficient of friction and bearing characteristic number okay so this area is if this uh, this is called bulk modulus i'll come to know they will like the value of the bcn bearing characteristic number correspond to minimum coefficient of friction at q is called bearing modulus k so we should not operate any bearing at k that is at q okay so if you draw on this one that is at this point so here it is okay this part is thin film lubrication so this is nil i can take and if this goes like this one this we call it as uh, thick film lubrication so thin film lubrication is unstable thick lubrication is stable and this we can say zero film lubrication you can say it like that okay so that is and the bearing should not be operated near the critical value k at q so to avoid seizure seizure means it uh, uh, stops running and squeezes so the operating value of bcn e must be 5k to 6k the fluctuating or impacting loads the operating values is somewhat more than 15k okay so some of that is uh, bearing characteristic number or curve so it is the curve between coefficient of friction and bearing characteristic number that is bcn that is nothing but coefficient of friction of the oil into speed of the journal by 
bearing pressure p next is somer field number so this is also very important uh, in the design of journal bearings and this is dimensionless parameter so mathematically somer field number is equal to radius of the journal by clear radial clearance whole square into bearing characteristic number you can say like that okay so this is bcn bearing characteristic number so for uh, design purpose its value is taken as 14.3 into 10 to the power of 6 from this also you can find out uh, what is uh, are the things uh, remaining unfound there is another called topic bearing materials in journal bearings the most prominent things are these two that is bronze and babbit so in crank shaft like that one we use babbit like material for loose application we go for aluminum and zinc and in this bronze there is also called gun metal gm and it also that is brass material right bronze and babbit that is aluminum zinc porous metals and teflon other phenolic stall polycarbonate other you can simply say that is plastic nowadays we are using teflon sheets also okay that's all